What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the playoff edition of the DFS OGs podcast right here on rotogrinders.com. I am your host, as always, Chris Beermakers Fan Prince, joined by my fellow OGs, my boys, Notorious and Head Chopper here to break down these six games we have on tap. Uh, you can play, it looks like uh, DraftKings is kind of dividing things up into Saturday and Sunday, uh, but we will cover each and every game with our favorite plays. We'll talk about injuries, guys returning from injury, uh, and of course, favorite stacks, things like that. And we'll mix in our favorite bets as well. And we have quite the update on the picks. So we will get to that as well. Our regular season wrapped up and uh, a shocking finish to say the least. But let me bring in my boys here. Chop, Noto, Noto, let's go to you, buddy. Regular season is behind us. So how did week 17 treat you? Uh, and welcome into the playoff pod. Yeah, what's going on, guys? Excited for the playoffs. Week 17 was not great for me. Uh, I had far too much exposure to teams that had a lot to play for. And then, you know, Lamar Jackson didn't play the fourth quarter. Uh, Nick Chubb didn't really do much of anything. It kind of seemed like uh, the teams that had nothing to play for, but were at full strength anyway. You know, the Vikings, the Texans, the Lions. Those are the teams you wanted exposure to because they were just going all out. And, uh, you know, I missed out on some really big fantasy outings from those teams so it wasn't a good week for me and uh judging by the way you gave that intro to the picks I don't think uh, I held on to my lead on that either well maybe you did maybe I'm just uh, creating a little drama here but we'll, we'll see we'll check on that here shortly uh let's get over to chop how was week 17 and welcome into the playoff show what's going on week 17 was pretty terrible I ain't gonna lie uh, it's just it's one of those things man you uh for a week 17 I've never seen like chalk hit that hardcore, man. Chalk, it was just chalk everywhere. It was hitting, splashing everywhere. But the the good thing about this is that you get past the weirdest week of the year and you move on to the the most sane, like the most that you can you know exactly what teams are gonna do this week because it's the playoffs. So you go from one extreme to the other and I can't wait to to get into it. Yeah, I'm with you. I wish the sites would have done a little bit more of both days combined. I mean, FanDuel does have a, it looks like a $300,000 tournament, $100,000 tournament, but most of the big stuff uh, is divided up into two days, which we, we know that's the way the sites have gone. But uh, either way, we're, we're going to break it down uh, each and every game. Uh, I don't know when you guys will be listening to this. So uh, if you missed last week's show, obviously we revealed that we will be doing uh, some NBA content as well, which we're all very excited about. Uh, and that will be on Grinders Live on Roto Grinders. You can also find that on YouTube. And we'll be live doing that for an hour each and every Wednesday night, 5.30 to 6.30. So uh, really looking forward to that. Uh, these two guys know NBA inside and out uh, and excited to get there and uh, keep, keep spreading our wings here. You know, we, we've done all football for the past couple seasons, but we all play NBA. Uh, so it'll be exciting to get in some NBA content. So Anything you guys want to talk about on that front uh, before we get into the NFL stuff? I'm just looking. I just can't believe that we got Derek, who I said last week writes the best article on NBA out there probably every single day. But he never does NBA Grinders live shows, never does shows for the NBA. We get, we get to do it with him once a week. So that's, that's going to be something of a treat right there. Yeah, agreed. I mean, that's one of my first stops each and every day is reading that column and uh, should already have some hardware for that, in my opinion. But I think that's coming uh, sooner rather than later. But uh, Noto, any thoughts here on, on NBA and doing those shows before we dive into the NFL here? Yeah, you guys are too kind. And I think, uh, you know, those grind downs, they really are a grind. So uh, that's probably why I haven't <laughs> been on a lot of shows. <laughs> Just By the time they're up, it's like two uh, my time. Um, so, you know, the slate's locking in a few hours. So I got to, you know, get some rest in after that. But uh, yeah, I'm excited to do the shows. And uh, hopefully we have some fun stuff, uh, you know, for the viewers too while we're doing it. Yeah, absolutely. We, we got a lot of big plans for that. It'll kind of uh, roll out as it goes, uh, but it's going to be a show dedicated to you guys. We want it to be very interactive. So again, you, you may hear this after our first episode. Not exactly sure uh, when this pod is going to appear on site. We are recording before we do our first NBA show, but uh, either way, looking forward to you guys uh, kind of carrying over. Uh, whether you played NBA forever or not, uh, we're going to try to incorporate some strategy in there as well. 
uh, for beginners, for advanced, uh, for all different levels. So uh, excited about the possibilities there. So anything that you guys want to see, maybe there's something uh, that's not being fulfilled in, in the NBA market, please feel free uh, to reach out to any of the three of us. Uh, it's kind of how we're shaping the show is what you guys want. That's what we want to provide. And hopefully we will continue to do that here with the NFL. So let's dive in, guys. Again, six games now uh, with this new playoff setup. Uh, divided into three on Saturday, three on Sunday. We'll start with the Colts and the Bills. The Bills, uh, six and a half point favorites here at home. No major injuries. Cole Beasley questionable. Uh, he is listed as week to week. So uh, more on the iffy side, if you ask me, uh, rather than him being able to suit up. But uh, everything else, uh, good to go here. We saw Jonathan Taylor have a massive game uh, against Jacksonville last week. It's another pretty good matchup here. Buffalo uh, has struggled on the ro- on the the against the run, but – uh, going on the road, Buffalo playing with a lot of confidence. We thought they would rest last week, and uh, they go out and punch Miami in the mouth, put up 56 points. So, Derek, we'll start with you this week. A tough challenge here for the Colts, but uh, defense plays in the, in the, in the playoffs, running game plays. Do they have any shot here at, at upsetting Buffalo here in this one? Uh, I mean, they certainly have a shot, and uh, we're getting to the point where the matchups are all getting a little bit tougher, you know, better defenses are in the playoffs and the ones we've seen uh, in some of the full slates. And then we also have fewer options just given the fact that there are fewer games. So uh, we do have to dive a little bit deeper into these games. Uh, as far as the cold side goes, uh, yeah, I mean, the Bills defense has been a lot better since Matt Milano returned from injury. Uh, they're now top 17 in both pass DVOA and run DVOA, which uh, earlier in the year, they were like bottom six in both. So I actually uh, don't love the Colts offense. You know, Phillip Rivers, zero rushing upside. His favorite weapons probably going to get shadowed by Tredavious White. He doesn't like playing outdoors that much anyway, uh, that being T.Y. Hilton. So I don't really know if I want a ton of the passing game. They might be playing from behind, so maybe that uh, could lead to some Naheem Hines kind of garbage time. Um, I don't mind having a couple of shares of him in tournaments. But like you mentioned, I think Jonathan Taylor's a play here. He's kind of turned into the clear RB1 in Indy. He's looked great over the last five games. You mentioned you can attack the Buffalo Bills on the ground a little bit, so He'd be the guy I'd look to there. And it's worth noting that uh, running back is pretty thin for a three-game slate. Um, there's a lot of guys that are just iffy. So I do think Taylor's in play. He does get a lot of pass work as well. If I have to take someone from the passing game, I'd probably go with Zach Paschal. Um, he's a deep threat. He's at least caught a few touchdowns recently. Uh, and he's going to be cheap and low-owned. Uh, on the other side, Josh Allen should be the chalk quarterback of the Saturday slate and probably of the uh, – The full slate as well, unless you want to go to Lamar Jackson, who we'll get to here soon. You know, he's got a lot of rushing upside. He's got passing upside as well. You can pair him up with Stephen Diggs. And then, as you mentioned, I think Cole Beasley is closer to doubtful. Uh, I kind of agree with you, Beard, with that. But he is listed as questionable. If he's out, Gabriel Davis is going to see more work. John Brown played on 47% of the snaps last week, ended up catching a touchdown. So I think he would be interesting as well. And uh, the backfield, I don't really know if I, you know, want exposure to him. But again, um, the running back position is pretty scarce for the Saturday three gamers. So if I have to choose one, I'll probably go, uh, I'll probably go Zach Moss. Yeah. Th- those Buffalo running backs kind of been a, a quandary all season long, but uh, like you said, the, the running back position is thin as is the tight end position. Uh, it's been ugly all year long, but uh, we don't have a lot to go off here. I mean, yes, we have Gronk, we have Logan Thomas, but I, I want to throw Dawson Knox in the mix as well. A guy that's been getting more and more involved uh, in that offense. And I love the call of some of those secondary uh, Buffalo pieces. They're cheap. And I know the Colts defense, very good. They, they do very well at, at limiting the big plays. We know that, but all it takes is one for a Davis or a John Brown uh, to pay that price off. So uh, Josh Allen, not afraid to make those throws. Uh, I think one of those guys could hit pretty big. Uh, both going to be a part of my player pool for sure. Chop, let's get over to you, buddy. Colts and bills. What do you got? I think it's a really good game. I think, uh, uh, looking at the three games, it might be the most intriguing, and it kicks off the weekend. But uh, uh, yeah, as far as fantasy, like it's a three-game slate. Yeah, so you tr- you know we're treating it like a three-game or not, not the six-gamer because uh, you know they didn't put enough out there for that. But on three games like this, you you're not going to load your roster up with all good players like you can do on a ten or twelve-game slate. You're going to you're going to have to dumpster dive a little bit here so all you really want is a guy who's really cheap that gets you a touchdown on a slate like this and so I think uh I'm looking to a guy like Michael Pittman you know as as a guy who can uh 
explode here. And when I, by I say explode, I mean at that price tag, get you a touchdown. That's all you really need. So I like a, like a Michael Pittman. I, I'm like, I'm like, no, no, I don't want T Y Hilton here. And Jonathan Taylor's the clear guy on the Colts, but I don't know how much exposure I want to that. I'll probably be under underweight on the field, but I do think Indianapolis can compete in this game and keep it close and maybe even pull an upset. So I think it's going to come on the back of a little known wide receiver or a lesser owned wide receiver, Pittman, maybe a Jack Doyle or somebody like that. Buffalo is going to be super popular just because of the way they've ended the season with offense. And so that's fine. But I think it's, I think this game is going to be a lot tighter. And on, on Buffalo, yeah, Josh Allen, chalky quarterback, the, his receivers are going to be chalk. So it is what it is. I'm not going to disagree with any of those plays, but, uh, yeah, I don't. I think I'll probably be underweight on them. I, I think it's a tougher matchup than than what they're giving credit for. Yeah, I just I, I agree. I don't know that you're going to get a massive ceiling game out of him. We've seen him have some big games. It's not out of the question that he comes out and, and tears this defense up. But uh, at the same time, he said it. He's going to be 40, 50 percent owned here. I mean, we don't. I mean, we asked. We have Russell Wilson. We have Tom Brady. But I think Josh Allen going to maybe not that high. You know, but still, I think the highest owned quarterback. Uh, one real quick uh, on the indie side, if you do expect Buffalo to kind of handle this game, maybe Naheem Hines is the play. I mean, if everyone's going to go to Taylor, uh, he's going to be the chalky running back. Hines is the guy that is, if they're playing catch-up mode, he's the pass catching back. And not to say Taylor can't do it, but uh, he's a fraction of the cost here and will be way lower owned. So uh, even in a competitive game, Naheem Hines at 4,700, I think provides some value there. So Chop, let's get a betting pick here. We'll, we'll extend into the playoffs. This won't count against our standings. Maybe we'll have a little two-week playoff challenge. Uh, maybe I can actually win a, a, a picks contest. So we'll start fresh here with the playoffs. We got Bills minus 6.5. We have 51.5 on the total. I'm going to take the Colts here, the underdog. I'm going Indy as well. Uh, I think they can hang in this game. I figured this would be about a seven-point spread, but uh, I don't know if they'll win this one, but I think they'll keep it tight. Colts for me as well. Derek? Give me the under. We talked about the Colts being uh, underrated defense, and I think the Bills' defense has been playing a lot better in the second half of the season. All right, so we mentioned the regular season. So we got to take a look, and it was a tight race. Clearly, I did not win, but uh, did almost finish 500, 89-90-1. So – uh, was down most of the season, made a late run at it. Not quite enough. Derek, seven and eight last week, puts you at 94, 86 and two. Good for a 52% winning percentage. Chop, nine and six last week, 94, 85 and one. So he, 52 and a half percent. So you edge Derek <laughs> out by a half a percent. Same amount of wins, one less loss, two ties cost Noto there. Uh, in the win. So, Chop, you take the gold medal podium here. Anything to say? Yeah, I'm super – this might be the biggest accomplishment of the year. <laughs> this is the big one right here. I, I'm so stoked on it. Can you repeat that number, 94, 85, and 1? Yes, sir, to 94. I got to te text that one to my dad. Yeah. That's <laughs> 94, 86, and 2. You guys were that close. Man, yeah, that's good. That's good stuff. Uh, I actually uh, – I'm enjoying that. I'm, I'm, I'm king for a year, man. There you go. So we'll, we'll, we'll scrap this though. And I want to, I want to send a shout out. We're going to, we're going to go to this playoff one. And I, I want to send a thank you to Mike Lynn uh, who helped us out all season long. In fact, I'm uh, going to save a spot for him on next week's pod. Uh, he'll join us for a little bit. A guy that's very involved uh, in fantasy football has, has been at some live finals, the draft qualifiers uh, back in the day. So uh, he's going to come on and, and uh, we all love, I think giving people an opportunity uh, to break into the business and, you know, share a little bit of their story. So we're going to give them that opportunity uh, here next week uh, just for helping us out all season long. So thank you to him. But Chop, well done, buddy. A hell of a comeback there. And Noto, maybe next season. All <laughs> yeah, right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do an audit of these results. I'm going to go back <laughs> and listen to all 17 pods. <laughs> I actually started doing that. I'm like, yeah, no, this is taking forever. So uh, we'll, give, we'll give Chop the mantle there. And again, Thanks to Mike for doing that for us. All right, let's move on. Next game, uh, it's not uh, exciting here in the least, but it is one of the three games we have to play. We have Rams and Seahawks, very low total here. A lot of injuries, mainly on the Rams side. We know Jared Goff uh, dealing with that injury. Doesn't sound like he's going to be able to get back. So another week of John Wolford, it, it looked terrible. I mean, I've seen worse quarterback play 
a uh, guy that can move around a little bit. Uh, Cooper Cup uh, still on the COVID list as of this recording, so we'll see if he can get back in that lineup in Seattle. Uh, just has Carlos Hyde listed as questionable. So, Chop, we'll go to you. This this game not very sexy. We don't know what's going on with the Rams' offense. A very low total here. Uh, what are we taking out DFS wise of Rams Seahawks? I'm actually looking forward to this game. I think it's going to be interesting. The thing about Seattle is, uh, you know, no matter who they would be facing here in the first round or in the playoffs in general, they're they're never going to get blown out. Like Russell Wilson is too good to get blown out. He'll always make it a game. But the it's a vice versa effect also. They don't blow anybody out. They're just not good enough to, like, run away with the game. So I think it's going to be competitive. I think it's going to be a good game for Seattle. Uh, I mean, man, it, that's the tough one because you want to think Wilson, you want to think Metcalf and Lockett is this great passing game when they get it cooking. But, boy, if there's one defense that's capable of shutting them down, it's the Rams. So I think that's a big dynamic in this game. And uh, so I guess that leads us maybe to Chris Carson. And hopefully he flies under the radar. But I think Chris Carson – is as capable as any running back on this entire six-game slate of going multiple touchdowns. I think he's right up there with Derrick Henry on the six-gamer. Like, it could very well happen. So, I'm a big Chris Carson guy this week. Uh, If I was going to pick somebody in the passing game, it would be Tyler Lockett. I I really think Metcalf is going to get shadowed by the big man, Jalen Ramsey. So, uh, I'll lean lean towards Lockett there. But I think there's going to be offense in this game now. The Rams, eh, it looks like golf is more doubtful. And that, that hurts the pass catchers. Walford is – he can be a productive quarterback DFS-wise because he can run a little bit. But he's going to bring down Woods and he's going to bring down Cooper Cup and, and, and those guys. So that's unfortunate. But uh, I think Walford himself can be played. It's only – let's say we're dealing with three games. I think you could go run him out there naked. I don't think you have to pair him with a wide receiver. So I'm not I'm – not, Opposed to that, Cam Akers made this miraculous comeback this last week. I, I couldn't believe it. So, apparently he's healthy enough to play. So, we're in the playoffs now. If there's a weak spot on Seattle, it's the it's the passing defense. But they've just been good general in the second half. I think I read somewhere they're the number one defense over the past, like, six weeks or something. It's crazy yeah. the turnaround they made. But, you know, if the Rams are going to get it done, they're going to have to do it behind the offensive line of Cam Akers. So, I guess I can lean towards Cam Akers and I'll throw a dart on uh, Tyler Higby to catch a touchdown or so in this game. I think, I think there's room for him to grow in this game. So I guess I'm a little, I'm a little higher on this game than most people are going to be when they look at that terrible 43, but I think, I think there's something to be said for this game. Yeah. I I agree with a lot of what you said. I I really like the Wolford call. I know it's not Tom Brady. I know it's not uh, uh, Allen, but uh, like I said, this guy can move around a little bit, 56 rushing yards and, uh, this is a defense, yes, they're they're playing extremely well down the stretch, but I still think it's a defense that can be had, and uh, 4,900 is going to really open some things up. Not that there's a ton of studs on this slate to go out and roster, but uh, I think he can give you enough uh, at that position. So I like that call uh, on Russell Wilson. He has not been good against this team. We're talking about two matchups this season. Was held under 250 passing yards in each of those games. One combined touchdown pass uh, in two matchups with the Rams. So – uh, as far as the high-end quarterbacks go, I know it's Russ. I know it's the playoffs. Maybe he gets it going, but uh, he's a guy that I do not feel comfortable playing at all this week, uh, which would lead me to Chris Carson here as well. So, Chop, we're on the same page with this game. Let's see if Derek agrees, disagrees. No, no, what do you got? Rams, Seahawks. Yeah, I pretty much agree with everything you guys said, uh, which is kind of scary. We're going to be fading Russ Wilson and DK Metcalf in a playoff game, and uh, hopefully that doesn't make us look uh, silly, but – Such a tough matchup. You guys mentioned his struggles against the Rams. Uh, Jalen Ramsey has done a really good job against Metcalf so far. Uh, So you got to think Tyler Lockett will get the majority of the targets in this one, at least, uh, you know, from a game plan perspective. So I prefer Lockett over Metcalf, um, but he is more expensive on DraftKings, and I'm kind of going to guess that everyone else is going to do the same thing. So maybe Metcalf is going to be the good tournament play. We know we can win in any one-on-one matchup. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, It just feels bad fading those two guys, especially in a playoff game. But I like Chris Carson the most as well. Home favorite running back, as I mentioned, running back position in this slate is pretty ugly. So he would be my play there. I actually don't mind pairing him up with the defense. Um, You know, if Wolford ends up being the guy under center for the Rams. And shout out to the Pick 6 show here on Roto Grinders. They were calling him the Wolford of Wall Street, uh, which I kind of like. That's a good nickname. (laughs) Solid. 
Yeah. Uh, you guys mentioned the running upside. That's going to make him a viable option. 56 yards last week, and props to him. He threw a pick on his very first uh, pass attempt and then came back, led the team to win, got him in the playoffs. Um, so, yeah, I actually don't mind him if you are looking for some savings, if you want a cheap quarterback that's not Josh Allen for the Saturday slate. And you guys mentioned Cam Akers. I mean, we didn't even think he was going to play last week, and then they said he didn't look very good in warm-ups. Still played on 65% of the snaps, so – Got to think he's going to have at least a path to 20-plus touches. He's probably going to be uh, the guy I look to for the Rams. Uh, pass catchers, yeah, I don't know. Cooper Cup should be back. That should help a little bit. But I just don't – yeah, I don't know. And these, both these offenses have a, a lot of question marks in these matchups. Yeah, and as far as Akers go, we don't have to worry about Daryl Henderson. You know, I know when it's three running backs, you're always concerned. But he's out uh, at least the first two rounds. So, uh, basically, it's Akers and Brown, and, and we saw Akers kind of dominate the work there. Uh, and then back to Wolford, that guy plays with a lot of confidence. I mean, he, he's not the the stiff backup court, the, the Mason Rudolphs and, and guys like that. I mean, he's moving around. He's trying to make things happen. So, uh, and that nickname, it kudos to those guys. That, that's outstanding. So, uh, great nickname there. All right, Noto, let's get a betting pick here. I mentioned that low total sitting at 43, and we have Seattle four-point favorites here at home. Ah, the line feels wrong uh, if we assume it's going to be Wolford back there, but um, I'll eat the chalk. Give me Seattle. I'm going to go over. Uh, I know it's a, uh, can be an ugly game here, but 43, I think these teams can do enough offensively to, to each land in the twenties and uh, hit that over. So I'll go over the 43 chop. Just feels like a game that's decided by a field goal at the end either way. So give me the underdog. Give me uh, the Rams. All right, let's wrap up Saturday night. We have Tampa Bay uh, gets the, the NFC East matchup here with Washington. Uh, if you guys want to hit on any of that Philadelphia stuff and uh, the Giants uh, all pissed off about Philly, uh, bringing in the backup quarterback, have at it. But uh, it ends up being Tampa and Washington here, Tampa big favorites. Uh, only injury, Mike Evans, questionable. We saw him uh, get hurt in that last game. But uh, sounds like he should be all right. He was at walkthrough. Uh, today as of this recording so uh, I think he'll be in there uh, and be fine so chop back to you here Tampa Bay on a roll we always have the three receivers we need to debate uh, Ronald Jones in this matchup is he's doing anything for you and then what do we do on the Washington side I, I know McLaurin going to be a popular target uh, Logan Thomas just because of lack of, of tight end options can we do anything to those running backs Alex Smith doing anything for you uh, what do you got here Bucks and the football team well, start off with the uh, the whole last week, the, the shenanigans in Philly. Like, <laughs> it just shows you the lack of pride Philadelphia has. The football team just terrible. You gotta, you gotta go in the second half. You gotta, you gotta try to win that. I know. Great, you move up three spots in the draft. Whoop de doo. You're not going from number three to number one or something like that. You're not, you know, you're going from like nine to six. It's not a big jump to show a little pride and try to knock that team out of the playoffs, but it is what it is, whatever. All right, let it go. Tampa Bay, Washington. I'm going to be intrigued by the way Tom Brady handles. Like he's had some cupcake matchups here down the stretch. The cupcake matchups he's taken advantage of this year. The tougher matchups at times he's looked horrendous. So now he gets a tough, tough defensive line here. I'm going to be very intrigued to see if he can handle the Chase Allen and Washington Redskins defensive line here. So uh, this could be a total bu a bus spot for Tom Brady if, if the pressure gets to him. So I'm intrigued on that. And then on the flip side, he could absolutely go ham. He could go 404 touchdowns because, well, he's, he's done that this year too. So uh, it's interesting, but I don't want any part of the backfield here. Uh, if I had to guess between – if you, if if it was one or the other – Fade Tom Brady or go all in on Tom Brady? Whew. I'm probably going all in on Tom Brady as opposed to fading him altogether. So I have a little bit, little bit of confidence in him, but I just think he's going to be interesting. And his his targets, they could go to any one of the guys. I don't even know what, what was the I'll, – I'll, I'll let Notorious hit on that in a minute, the, the latest update on Mike Evans. But, uh, boy, that didn't look good uh, when, when he reached back for his leg while trying to catch that pass in Week 17. So – Hope he's okay, but uh, that would just bump up uh, Godwin and Antonio Brown if that if he were hobbled, limited, or or out altogether. So uh, he still has a plethora of targets. On the flip side, Washington, this one's intriguing because uh, Tampa Bay's defense hasn't played great down the stretch, but 
I think they're still good. I still don't believe in the Washington offense. I still think it's super conservative and just not that good with Alex Smith back there. So I don't want Alex Smith. I don't want that backfield. That's it's kind of a split mess right there. I don't know how it's going to play out. And McLaren's the one guy that stands out as the guy you could play. So McLaren and Logan Thomas are fine, but I'm not super stoked on the Washington offense. So as far as Evans, uh, no structural damage. He was at the walkthrough this morning. Uh, it's listed as day to day. So if anything, it, it looks like he's going to be able to play. They could even hold him out, you know, thinking, hey, we're going to win this game. We don't need him. Antonio Brown is playing very well. We already have Godwin in place. So maybe that happens. But uh, if anything, he avoided a major injury. So uh, we'll keep an eye on it. But uh, Washington side, I think J.D. McKissick could be an interesting play here. If we think Tampa's going to roll, as Vegas does, we know he's a passing downs back, 4,800 uh, for him. It hasn't been, wasn't great last week, but we've seen some very big games out of him at a very cheap price tag. In fact, this is about the lowest price he's been uh, over the last month or so. So I like him on that side. I like McLaurin. I, I just think they're going to be uh, in comeback mode in Tampa. Chop, we need that hierarchy, your, your, your hierarchy of Tampa Bay receivers. Let's pretend Evans is in there. Rank those three for us. Yeah, seeing – just watching Evans limp off last week, I'm assuming even if he's in there, he's more of a decoy for me this week. So Godwin, Antonio, Gronk, and then, and then Mike Evans. All right, Dodo, let's go to you. Same questions. Uh, break down those Tampa receivers. Where are you coming out on Ronald Jones, uh, who's kind of established himself uh, as the top back here? Uh, is Brady uh, the quarterback we want, or do you have those same concerns? And then – who on the Washington side is maybe a running back option? All right. For Tampa Bay, uh, Chop mentioned that Washington has a defense to knock Tom Brady off his spot. Um, if anyone can slow him down, it's going to be a good pass rush. So um, there is that concern. With that said, he's been one of the best quarterbacks in football this year. I know we like to give him a lot of crap, uh, but if you look at like football outsiders, any of the you know efficiency metrics, he's third in their DYAR uh, category of all uh, quarterbacks this season he's been really good especially in the second half of the season so I kind of agree with Chop if it's between you know going all in or fading him completely I would rather go all in I don't want to trust his backfield uh, especially against his front seven so um, I don't mind Tom Brady he's probably not going to be my preferred option on the Saturday slate but uh, I don't mind having a little bit of exposure to him as far as the wide receivers I mean if Mike Evans is active I think he becomes a great GPP play uh, people hate targeting those guys with the Q next to their name. He's going to have that questionable tag all week. And uh, he has been the number one option for Tom Brady. So if he is, you know, good enough to give it a go, he'll be my number one uh, tournament play. Um, and if he's out, you know, you can go to Godwin, you can go to Brown. Um, if all three are active, I think I would rank them. Evans, Godwin, and then Brown. And, you know, don't forget about Gronk either. Washington side, uh, you know, Ron Rivera came out and said they might rotate Alex Smith and Tyler Taylor Heineke, which uh, is kind of crazy at this point. I don't know if it's just coach speak and they're trying to throw off the Buccaneers or whatever. Uh, but if they rotate quarterbacks, that can't be good for their offense. Um, but either way, Alex Smith wants to check the ball down. I like pairing him up with – not pairing him up. But I like using Logan Thomas. He's really come on strong, uh, averaging 17 fantasy points over the last six weeks after kind of letting everyone down, you know, over the first half of the season. I don't mind Terry McLaurin either. Uh, I know Tampa Bay has a good defense on paper, but their pass defense has struggled a bit in the second half of the season. So I like McLaurin. I like Logan Thomas. Uh, McKissick is okay if you do think they're going to fall behind. Um, and, yeah, that'll do it for me. Do you guys think uh, Haneke will actually get any snaps? I, I just don't see why the hell they would do that. I mean, what, what? I just don't understand the point. We haven't seen this guy all season long. Now you're going to bust him out here in, in a playoff game on the big stage against Tampa Bay and Tom Brady. I, I just – I don't see the, the point of it. Chop, any insight there? No, I don't think that happens. There you go. Simple to the point. It's all Alex Smith here. So, uh, no, no, let's get a betting pick here. Like I mentioned, Tampa, big eight and a half point favorites, total sitting at 45. Uh, I like home underdogs for the most part, and this is a big spread, and we know Washington's defense is good, so give me Washington. I like Washington as well. I think they can hang in this game, and I don't know if they win it, but I think they can keep it close enough, so I will take the football team here as well. Chop, what do you got? I think the defense is good enough to give Thomas Brady some problems. So I'm going to take the under here. 
Any interest in playing the defense? 2,400. Absolutely. That's, Absolutely. That's what I, I – was eyeing that defense. Like, it's, it's cheap enough. Not the cheapest, Steve. We got Indy uh, sitting at 2,200. But uh, I think enough pressure with Sweat and Young coming off the edges here. Uh, you guys both spoke about it. Uh, I think that's one of the better uh, defensive plays here. Even against a very good offense, uh, maybe they can create some turnovers here. So, uh, a defense to write down for you. This, the football team at 2,400. All right, let's move to Sunday. Another three games on tap. We'll start with Baltimore and Tennessee. Maybe the game of the weekend. This one is uh, going to be fun. This is a rematch from last year. We remember uh, the Titans uh, went in and knocked off the Ravens uh, when they were one of the favorites to make it to the Super Bowl. So uh, now we kind of get a flip-flop here. The game is in Tennessee. Uh, very high total in this game. Highest total we have on the weekend. We have no injuries outside of Willie Sneed uh, listed as questionable. So no, no, we know. There's big names on both sides of this one. Lamar Jackson, Derrick Henry, A.J. Brown. I mean, this game is just loaded up uh, with stars. So parse through that. Who are your favorites? Who are you going out of your way to get here? Maybe some guys you're avoiding. Uh, this clearly is the most stackable game on the slate. So uh, let's break it down from all angles here, Ravens and Titans. Yeah, a lot of good pieces in this one. The other two for the Sunday slate uh, feature four pretty good defenses. So I do like the idea of stacking it. Um, and the Titans actually beat the Ravens earlier this season too. So uh, it would be pretty crazy for them to beat the Ravens three times in a row. Uh, regardless, love the spot for Lamar Jackson. 22 or more fantasy points in five straight games. And he did it last week without playing the fourth quarter. You can pair him up with Marquise Brown, um, who's really come on strong the last couple of weeks. You can pair him up with Mark Andrews. Uh, but you don't necessarily have to. You know, Lamar's one of those guys that could easily, you know, break a slate without doing a ton through the air. He's capable of going over 100 yards uh, on the ground himself. You have J.K. Dobbins, who scored a touchdown in six straight games. But his role just hasn't gotten that much bigger. I mean, he's scored a lot of touchdowns, but um, he's only had like a 44% snap rate last week. We saw Mark Ingram back in the mix, uh, which none of us really wanted to see. So I think if you're trying to get sneaky, maybe Gus Edwards is the guy. He's $2,200 cheaper than... Dobbins is on DraftKings and he's getting a similar workload. We know um, he's been getting more involved in the passing game as well. So uh, maybe Edwards is the sneaky guy there. The Titans, it's pretty simple. Derrick Henry, AJ Brown, uh, you can play them pretty much every single week. Henry had a big game against them in the playoffs last year, had a big game against them earlier this season, coming off of that huge game against the Texans to go over 2,000 yards on the season. That was pretty fun to watch. Um, so they're going to give him the ball as much as they can early in the game. As long as it stays competitive, you got to think he's going to be in the mix, um, Brown, I, I don't mind the tough matchup against the secondary. And then Corey Davis is always going to be that guy that um, can fly under the radar a little bit, especially since he kind of struggled towards the end of the season. Yeah, uh, this game took place uh, in week 11. It was 30-24 Titans. So it looks like Mark Andrews had a big day uh, in that game. And Corey Davis, like you mentioned, uh, led the way, went over 100 yards uh, in that one. Derrick Henry, 133 and a touchdown. So – Again, Chop, same question to you. This, this game, a ton of options. But who are your favorites? Maybe some guys you're avoiding. Uh, how do you handle in this Ravens-Titans game? Yeah, I think there, there's probably better teams this weekend than Tennessee. But, uh, oh, man, is there like is, – is, are they the most feared team this weekend? Probably. You know, like I, they're the one team I wouldn't want to play if I was, if I was uh, one of the other 11 teams. So, I think Tennessee's in – they're just awesome in the playoffs. They got that big offensive line, Derrick Henry, two alpha wide receivers and a good quarterback. So they're all in play, man. They're all in play. And the weird thing is I saw reading about it last weekend about how it just defies the logic of correlation to have these games where Derrick Henry goes crazy and A.J. Brown goes crazy. You just usually don't see the RB1 and wide receiver one do that. And they do it, and they do it all the time. So everybody's in play, and they're in play on the same damn roster. So can't I can't take nothing from Tennessee. I think they have a nice game offensively. Baltimore is going to be the one that has to answer the bell here. It's going to be up to Lamar if he, you know, the last two seasons in the playoffs, he's been shut down in the first game. I believe it was the first game last year against this team. But he's been shut down, man. He hadn't gotten anything done in the playoffs. So – Let's see what he can do this year. Uh, if he gets it done, I do like it to Mark Andrews. So he's going to be on the ground and to Mark Andrews. So those are the targets right there. Marquise finally caught him a couple touchdowns last week. So he's in play. 
I mentioned it in the first game with uh, Michael Pittman. You're going to need to find a guy who's cheap and can get you a touchdown. That may be the key to winning money this weekend. So then a guy like Miles Boykin is in play here because of that. And then the backfield, I'm going to lean towards Dobbins as the guy here. But uh, yeah, if I, if I catch, if you catch wind that all three of them are active, definitely takes some of the luster off. But I think Dobbins is good enough to, to make it happen. Yeah, I still think he's the guy, and I don't think they're going to use all these guys. I mean, they're all going to play, but I think you're going to see more of a, a separation uh, in Dobbins' favor, maybe more Edwards and Ingram. But uh, that that's a, a, a backfield that we know has been a mess all season long. So uh, not at the top of my list as far as Lamar Jackson goes. Uh, Tennessee has done a good job against him, like you said. I mean, held him to his third lowest uh, fantasy output this season, just 17 DraftKings points uh, in that game uh, in Week 11. So – Maybe they got the formula here to to hold him down. And, and Tennessee, it's not only the correlation with Derrick Henry and A.J. Brown, it's Derrick Henry and Ryan Tannehill go off together too. And, and it's it's shocking because Henry's not involved in the passing game. There's a lot of quarterback, running back correlations that that play well together when the guy's involved in the passing game. But uh, the, the all three of those guys can put up huge games together. So uh, sounds like we're all on uh, more on the Tennessee side of things here. That being said, they're three-point underdogs here, Chop, with that total at 55. What do you got? Ooh, so I'm going back and forth between two of these bets in my head. And, uh, oh, man, it's it's do or die for Lamar Jackson. He's, he's, if, he gets, if he has a poor game for the third straight year in the playoffs, uh, I feel it's, it seems like jumping the gun to say it, but maybe you need to start looking elsewhere at your quarterback spot. So I'm going to say maybe he rebounds, has a good game, and that makes this thing go over. So I'm taking over. I like the over as well, but I think Tennessee wins this game. So mm-hmm. I, I will yeah. gladly yep. take the, the three points here. So uh, I do think we get a shootout, but I think Tennessee does it again. So give me the Titans plus the three. Noto. Oh, man. Yeah, give me the over. Um, the Titans – have combined for over 70 points uh, in their games in four of their last six. So they're getting into a bunch of shootouts. Uh, it's what we all want to see. So hopefully it happens. Yeah, that's where your fireworks are going to come from. We go from that uh, to a uh, potential blowout here with the Bears and the Saints. Saints big favorites here. Uh, obviously the questions are on the Saints side of the ball. Do we get the running backs back? Do we get Kamara, uh, Latavius Murray back? Do we get Michael Thomas back? Uh, Traquan Smith. So it sounds like the running backs should be good to go with this game being on Sunday. Uh, they will have enough time to get back in that lineup. Sounds like Michael Thomas uh, should be able to go back uh, and be able to get back into that lineup as well. So uh, could be all systems go here uh, for the New Orleans Saints chop. Uh, I think that's obviously good news rolling into the playoffs here. Uh, the Bears have, have played well down the stretch, obviously uh, came up short in that game against Green Bay, but uh, we've seen good games out of Trubisky, uh, Allen Robinson. Uh, David Montgomery has been playing as good as anybody at the running back position. So do they have any shot here uh, against New Orleans? And if so, what side are you leaning? Is it the passing game or is it David Montgomery here against the Saints defense? Yeah, I do think they have a shot. And I think they have, they have a shot more because of their defense. So, uh, But with their offense, if I'm taking a guess, I'm going to go with uh, – the passing game and Trubisky. Trubisky was scrambling a little bit, getting some stuff going on the ground. Uh, Allen Robinson catching a few key passes. And then one of those uh, secondary wide receivers, uh, a Mooney or a Miller or somebody, like, or a Cole Komet at tight end, stepping up and having a good game because, uh, you know, obviously Robinson should draw the tougher coverage, but uh, he's going to beat it more times. And I don't think that Montgomery's going to have a particularly big game here. This is a tough, tough defense, but. I think Trubisky can do enough running to establish a little bit of the ground game. So I think they have a shot, but I think it's based on their defense because just watching Drew Brees, man, I know he's liable to step up here and have four nice touchdowns or five touchdown game or something like that. But watching him over the second half of this year, since he came back from those ribs and even before then you could see like, man, he's just throwing nothing but lollipops. Like if he's getting it 20 yards downfield, like they're knuckleballs, man. They're just they're in they're hanging in the air. He's having a hard time. So I think the Bears can take advantage of it. And if he can't get the ball downfield, now the good thing for him and what's gonna propel him to maybe a win here is all you gotta do is dump it down to Kamara and he can make things happen. You you dump the slant 
to Michael Thomas, and he and he makes things happen. So he's got the weapons to win in the first round here, even with a poor arm. But uh, I think they're going to struggle a little bit on offense because of it. So, but like I said, it's a Camara, it's a Thomas, and nobody else really does anything for me for the Saints. Yeah, I worry about Breeze as well. And we know Taysom Hill is going to be involved when they get around the goal line. That's just opportunities your quarterback is losing out on. And, you know, maybe he doesn't lose out on those touchdowns. But I kind of share the same concerns uh, with Drew Breeze. When I look at the slate uh, and I can play Tannehill, Lamar Jackson, and I know you saved some money here at Breeze, I'd almost rather go with Trubisky here, Noto. I don't, I don't know if that's a hot take or not uh, over Drew Breeze. But uh, you got to think the Bears are playing from behind. He gives you a little, a lot more w- with his legs, and, and maybe he doesn't have the weaponry there. But uh, I would rather go Trubisky uh, at four hundred dollars cheaper than Breeze. So thoughts there, uh, thoughts on that Saints offense. Who do you prefer, Kamara, Thomas? Maybe you get both in the lineup. Uh, and the rest of your thoughts here, Bears and Saints. Yeah, Saints. We just got to wait and see. I mean, Kamara can't practice at all this week. I don't think uh, he's got to pass all the protocols and all that. And then he's just going to be active Sunday. So no practice for him. Uh, I do expect him to be out there. And then Michael Thomas just wait and see approach. But if they are both active, I think you can certainly play them both. Uh, we know that's where their offense is going to go through. Um, and I don't really have a ton of interest in Breeze. I agree with you guys. Just hasn't shown a lot of upside. Uh, gives you no rushing ability. And then, you know, there's always the the potential that uh, Taysom Hill comes in near the goal line. Uh, they use him more and more, seems like, throughout the, you know, the final few games of the season once they get down in the red zone. So uh, no breeze for me. Uh, I'm actually pretty high on this Bears offense. I know it's a tough matchup. The Saints are third in DVOA against the pass, second in DVOA against the run on, during the regular season, but they get to play indoors. And uh, this is one of the more concentrated offenses that we have left uh, in the playoffs. So uh, yeah, I like David Montgomery. Even last week, I mean, they were just force feeding him the ball. They got blown out by the Packers, and he still had 28 fantasy points. He caught all nine of his targets. Um, he still had 22 carries in that game. So they're going to get him the ball as much as they can. I think that price point is pretty cheap for a guy that could easily see 30 touches again. I like the Allen Robinson call. I don't hate the Trubisky call. And then Cole Komet's going to be my cheap guy in this offense. He's had at least six targets in four of his last five games. Just needs to find the end zone, and I think he can do it against the Saints. Yeah, Montgomery is a guy I'm high on as well. I mean, these two teams played back in early in this week six or so, and uh, he got the ball a ton in that game as well. So week eight it was, 21 carries. Didn't do a ton, but uh, still, that, that's obviously what they want to do is get the ball in his hands. Uh, you mentioned in the passing game uh, how involved he's been as well. It's just a lack of weapons uh, in that offense, so he has to do – uh, on both sides, uh, running and, patch- and catching passes. So a uh, big fan of Montgomery here, under 7,000, a uh, good price point as well. No, no, betting-wise, uh, Saints minus 10 here at home, total at 47 and a half. I think the Bears can compete, but I'm going to take the over. I think the Saints offense is getting healthy, and I, I like the Bears offense like we talked about. I'm going to go Chicago. It's a lot of points. Uh, I think they stay competitive here. You worry about it a little bit because we've seen the Saints just roll in the spot before. Uh, the Bears kind of new to the playoffs. The Saints, uh, grizzled veterans. But uh, I'll take the 10 points here with the Bears. Chop. This is a tough one. That's a lot of points. So, yeah, I guess I got to go Bears here. I, I mean, I could obviously see the – the exact opposite happened and Trubisky chokes away in the first quarter and then all of a sudden it's a blowout. But yeah, man, if they can survive that, those early nerves, I think they can uh, compete in this game. So give me the bears. All right, let's wrap it up here on wild card weekend with our last game here on Sunday night. We have Cleveland and Pittsburgh, a a kind of a rematch from last week. We know Pittsburgh uh, sat a lot of their guys. So Uh, They are back at full strength outside of uh, Eric Ebron remains on the COVID list. I think he'll be back uh, in that lineup, though, once we get to Sunday. So uh, full speed ahead here for these two teams. Cleveland first playoff appearance in 18 years, I believe it was, something around that. Uh, So obviously they're excited. Baker Mayfield playing well. Uh, The dual running backs here. But tough draw here, Noto, going into Pittsburgh, uh, who's going to be back at full strength here. Tough defense. Uh, Any shot here for the Browns to pull this off? I mean, the spread certainly indicates that they have a shot, but I'm just not seeing it. I mean, I know the Steelers haven't looked great either, but uh, the Browns lost to the Jets in week 16. They nearly blew it last week to the Steelers. Uh, They're going to be without their head coach who tested positive for COVID. So uh, like you mentioned, Pittsburgh is going to be back at full strength and uh, facing them uh, in Pittsburgh. 
I think it's going to be a tough spot for them. I think their best route is to give Nick Chubb the ball 25 times, but they just haven't been doing that recently. They're giving Kareem Hunt a ton of work. Um, even when they're playing with the lead, they're just um, they're not giving the ball to Chubb, even though he's been um, pretty good on the ground. So I don't have a ton of interest in uh, their offense. You know, maybe look to Hooper, maybe look to Landry, but it's not like they're that cheap. Um, so for me, it's going to be mostly the Steelers. And I think it's a pretty good spot for them. Uh, we know they don't want to run the ball, or at least they can't run the ball. And the Browns, they're ranked 24th or worse in fantasy points allowed to quarterbacks and wide receivers. So I think it's a pretty good spot for Deontay Johnson. Uh, we know he's going to get double-digit targets. He seemingly does that every single week. We finally saw him make a couple of contested catches last week, uh, which was kind of nice. You can look to Claypool and Juju uh, in tournaments. And I don't know what's with these coaches, but now they're saying Josh Dobbs might see some snaps. I think they're just uh, – is this just gamesmanship or what? I, again, I don't, I don't get that at all. I mean, I, I guess he would. At least this one makes a little bit more sense that he would bring a running element, uh, and maybe Taylor Heineke is a, more athletic than I'm giving him credit for. But uh, I guess that would be the only play on, on Dobbs. But again, Chop, I, I don't see why we're going to get cute with this week 17 or, or week one of the playoffs. It's a team that, yeah, they they kind of stumbled down the stretch a little bit, but for the majority of the season. They were undefeated and the best team in the league. So it uh, seems a little gimmicky to, to bring in a Josh Dobbs. But uh, your thoughts here, this game, I, I think, can stay competitive. But uh, the main question I have for you, the hierarchy again, the, the Pittsburgh receivers, uh, is it simply Deontay and the other two kind of fall by the wayside? Uh, so rank those guys for me. And then uh, what do we do on the Cleveland side? I think this is a – I like this game quite a bit. I, I'm very interested in this game because, uh, you know, Pittsburgh had the best defense in the NFL for a lot of the year. And and then Bud Dupree got hurt. And I'm not saying the injury to Bud Dupree, Bud Dupree did it all, but since that injury, they've been one of the worst defenses in the NFL. So uh, maybe it just caught up to them. Maybe it was the injury. I don't know. But, man, I'm curious to see – which defense shows up here. So, and I think Cleveland can move the ball on the ground. So I like Chubb. I like Hunt even to, I think they wear on them and wear on them. And then by the third, fourth quarter, they start breaking off bigger chunks. So I like that. I mean, and in the meantime, until they wear on them, I think Baker Mayfield can pepper a guy like uh, Jarvis Landry. And, and one of these guys, Landry Higgins, somebody comes up with a touchdown in this game or two touchdowns. So, uh, I like Cleveland to be able to move the ball. On the other, other side, I think Pittsburgh moves the ball. I think it, I think they, they do it the opposite way, though. No running game and all passing. So uh, my hierarchy would be Deontay. And like you said, Deontay and the other two guys. But Deontay, Chase, and Juju in that order would be mine. But uh, don't be surprised if Eric Ebron gets in the mix. And uh, generally, I think Roethlisberger at this price tag is one of the, one of my favorite options on the slate because I think all they're going to do is pass in this game. So. I think it's going to be a fun game. I like the passing game for Pittsburgh and the running game for Cleveland. Yeah, and these Pittsburgh receivers, I mean, Deontay 62, but Juju at 55, Claypool, we know the upside he's got at 5,200. I, I think definitely uh, going to be a big part of my lineups is going to all these guys. I, pr I prefer Deontay, but if you need the savings, uh, I don't mind going down to him. I have the same order they do have. I have Deontay, uh, Claypool, and Juju, but I think all three uh, in play here against this defense. That's the way you beat them. Yeah, it's, they're, they're better against the run. That secondary uh, can be had. So it uh, wouldn't shock me to see Pittsburgh just continue to throw the ball around the yard a million times like they've done all season long. All right, Chop, let's wrap up our picks as well. We got Pittsburgh minus 647 on the total. I just think Cleveland's good enough to hang in this game, so I'm taking Cleveland. Uh, let's go to Noto. I'm torn on this one. I don't have a clear-cut pick here. Usually agree with Chop on these things, but I think the Steelers win by 20 or more. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Sounds like a little side bet action there. <laughs> they just uh, aligned. I'm going to go under 47. Uh, don't love it, but uh, that's the first thing that came to my head, so that's what we'll go with, under 47. And that will wrap up the football analysis here for the six-game six wild-card slate. Guys, any final thoughts, favorite plays, whatever you want to add here before we get out of here? Uh, Chop, let's start with you. 
Yeah, I just uh, – it's, it's going to be a fun weekend. Like you said earlier, six games, man, for the first time. And there's – we're, we're kind of downing on the prize pools for the six-gamer, but it's not bad. It's not terrible. They threw 100K up top on DraftKings, and, you know, it just – it came out a little bit later than the other ones. So – but it's out there. So it's going to be a fun weekend. Uh, I think all these games, man, I can't look at any of these games and find one that I really dislike. I like them all. I think they all have their own personalities here, and it's going to be interesting to watch them all. So super, super stoked to sit down on Saturday and start watching island games one after another all the way till Sunday night. It's going to be fun and uh, looking forward to it. I can't wait. I, I've already told my family, leave me alone for, for two days. I'm, I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. Up, my man. wife wanted to go out on Saturday and do something. I said, eh, i got to work. I'm like, I only have a, a few weekends left here, and then you can uh, have me for whatever you want. But uh, these next few weekends, leave me alone. So uh, I agree, though. Excited, and I think some of these lower total games uh, is where you can really pull some gems. You know, people may avoid the, the Seattle Rams game or, you know, they're afraid to take anybody from Cleveland, Pittsburgh. They're all going to be owned because they're three-game slates. But uh, just looking at ownership this week, I think, is even going to be even more important and obviously can find that over on Roto Grinders. We are here to help uh, with Lineup HQ, along with many other tools, videos, articles uh, to help you guys out here uh, through the playoffs. No, no, let's go to you to wrap things up, buddy. Final thoughts here on the wild card weekend. Yeah, like you guys said, I'm very excited uh, to watch some playoff football. Also very excited to get this uh, NBA OG show going. And uh, yeah, one other note, if you are playing these three game slates, which you should be, um, don't forget to lay swap. Um, similar to the Thanksgiving slates, if you get off to a slow start, don't be afraid to you know get away from some chalk in order to give your lineups a chance to cash. And if you get off to a good start, don't be afraid to pivot to some chalk uh, in the later games. Yep, always keep that latest guy in that flex spot. Uh, just give yourself some some flexibility there uh, if you need to make some swaps. But always be looking ahead. Uh, definitely an underutilized uh, part of DFS uh, is those late swaps. So uh, make sure you're plugged in and on your couch, ready to make those changes. So as Noto said, uh, the DFS OGs are not done here with football. We'll be back next week with, with one more pod uh, for the divisional round. Another six gamer. No, we'll have a – is that a four gamer then? Yeah. Yeah. So that'll be four gamer, but we'll still be back to cover that. And of course, uh, again, excited about our NBA show uh, that will be live. You'll get to see all our mugs. We've generally kind of hidden behind uh, the podcast feed, but uh, I'll be on camera talking some NBA every Wednesday night from 530 to 630 on Roto Grinders. So excited for that. For Notorious Forehead Chopper, I am Beer saying salut. Best of luck, guys, this weekend. Have a, have a good one. Hopefully, you guys take it down. Any questions along the way, hit us up. Uh, check out that NBA show, and we'll be back next week to talk more football. For the DFS OGs, thanks for listening. We are out.